I've been professionally editing videos for about 10 years now, and you would think that, you know, around year five, you'd kind of have it all figured out, but that's just not the case. Uh, I've actually learned about seven new tips and tricks thanks to upgrades to software like DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro that have made my editing workflow way faster, and I wanted to take a moment to share them with you guys so you guys can be editing at lightning speed in no time. And if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna have one final tip that's gonna rock your world, so make sure you stick around for that. What's going on? My name is Andres Tagliaferro, but you can just call me Tags. And if you're new to the channel, I talk about all things content creation and entrepreneurship. So if you're a content creator like me and the community that watches my videos, then please consider hitting that subscribe button and liking the video so I pop up a little more on your feed. But now that that's done, you've subscribed. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is some slept on shortcuts that have made my editing workflow way easier. Now, if you don't know the basic shortcuts of your preferred program, I'd recommend that you go to your preferences and you find out what those shortcuts are. I'm an Apple user, so Command A, Command S. Knowing the basic shortcuts is already gonna make your workflow 10 times faster. So if you haven't taken the time to learn those, go and learn those. But I'm gonna talk about some shortcuts that aren't really talked about and are kind of hidden that I had to find through Googling out of frustration of not being able to do this one thing. But the first First one is going to be the select clips forward shortcut. So in Resolve, that's option Y. You'll see on the screen what it is on Premiere Pro. Basically, what this allows you to do is select everything ahead of your cursor. This happens to me a lot. Maybe there's something I want to cut and I don't want to ripple delete it. I just want to move everything in front of my cursor a little bit closer or a little bit further to make space. It's just a lot easier and it saves time than having to click and drag through all of the clips, which is something I used to do. And that's why I Google these. I'm like, I feel like there has to be a shorter way of doing it. The other one's going to be ripple deleting if you don't know what ripple deleting is it's when you delete a clip without leaving that space in the timeline so it moves everything in front of it back to where the beginning of that clip was this is super helpful when you're revising your edit right so let's say you laid the whole project out but you want to cut this out but you already have so many little items and you know text files and all of these things kind of layered out if you ripple delete something it'll bring everything up the third one is easy but it's just command plus and minus if you don't have a trackpad or you use a mouse or maybe you're just tired of pinching in and out of the timeline like and not having precise movement doing that command plus and minus is gonna zoom you in and out at like super perfect like notches and finally a slept on one that nobody does is using command X. one of the things that I hate doing is you know if I have my right hand on the trackpad and I have my left hand on my most used keys having to go and hit the delete button with my right hand is such a time waster and it's like it sounds dumb but it really is annoying and learning to instead of going and using the delete button but using command X to delete the clips that I want to delete has been an elite uh, time-saving thing. And again, it's one of those things that's more like, you know, keeping you in flow state kind of a thing. And it's like, if you do this enough times, it's gonna save you like an hour or two from your editing time. Okay, number two, this is gonna be like a new feature that has come out recently and that works really well, creating subtitles from audio. So I use DaVinci Resolve for the most part nowadays, um, which is funny because I made a whole video talking about why it sucks, but it's actually really good and I take it all back. I don't know what kind of work you do, but I used to do a lot of social media work. I still do a lot of social media work where it's like interviews and like tech stuff. And even for my videos, there's subtitles right now. And one of the things I hated doing before this was a available was creating a text file, lengthening it the size of the clip, and then cutting it right before the new sentence comes out and then changing it manually what they're saying. That was so annoying. So nowadays, you all you have to do, I like to just go up to the help bar in whatever program you're using, and then you type in create subtitles, right? Boom, it creates a subtitle track, and then it starts the process of creating the subtitles for you. I'm sure Premiere does it a little differently. Both softwares can create really precise, really good subtitles now through AI or whatever the heck it uses to do it. And it's a time saver a thousand percent. If you used to do subtitles, if that was part of your workflow, learning about this feature is a must. Now, I don't even stress about it. I used to stress about it. I used to be cutting up the video and be like, man, does this need subtitles? Number three, this one is a simple one, but if you don't know about it, I'm saving your life and I'm saving you hours, okay? And this is the synchronized audio tool. But basically, if you're editing a video where you have a video file and an audio file, 
well that aren't linked kind of like this video you used to have to go and look at the audio from the camera right and like match the waveform so it perfectly syncs now you just select both clips right click and then go to synchronize audio it saves you time again this is super basic common knowledge nowadays but if you didn't know i just saved your life and say thank you in the comments all right number four this one is uh all only in resolve i'm sorry it's it's i have to talk about resolve and how great it is because this has changed the way i edit uh, a lot and it saved me a ton of time and i want everybody in here who uses premiere or final cut to consider resolve for this purpose and this purpose only i'm talking about the open effects in resolve long story short davinci resolve has really good really good effect where your footage for titles for animation really cool preset effects which i have always been against i actually became an advanced motion designer on after effects and i learned all of those things and i do it really well it's part of what i do in my business it's motion graphics well resolve you could do some of the things that you weren't able to do in premiere you weren't able to do in basic editing things you'd have to go to some sort of compositing software like after effects well you can do it in resolve and i'm talking about little effects like the camera shake effect that you the camera shake effect that you saw in the intro of this video adding that to text that some wiggle effects on text that animate that's something i would have had to go into after effects to do you also have the really cool color grading tool like the glow and halation features which i love using i use them on this color grade if you're the type of person who wants to create more like bloomy cinematic stuff really cool effects there and there's a ton more effects but these are things that I, I wanted to put into this video because they do save your time if you're somebody who had to export out a video and import it into after effects in order to add all of these effects you know that that's like a really annoying part of the process the fact that you can do that in one program like it saves me so much time and i know it's gonna save you so much time and if you just weren't aware that you could do these things like i wasn't aware you could do these things again i made a video specifically talking about why premiere is better than resolve knowing that maybe you'll give da vinci a try and you know i think that that will crazily improve and make your editing way faster. So number five, now we're talking color grading. I think that if you consistently use one camera and you consistently use a specific picture profile, you should create your own set of presets. And let me explain why this is gonna make your editing way faster. Color grading is a serious part of video editing, right? And if you're doing it all yourself, which I'm assuming you are, if you're watching this video, color grading can be a little annoying and tricky. So having your own set of presets that make your videos uniquely you and saving your own LUTs that you can start every piece of content off with, I think is one of the best things that you can do for yourself. Now, this can look like buying a preset pack from your favorite creator. This can look like downloading the Sony, you know, Rec 709 LUT, whatever. But having those presets to start your color grades off of is something that saves me a a ton of time i have a preset for this video i have a preset for client work having a set of presets for your color grades is gonna save you a lot of time and now i'm not saying get presets so that can be your all-in-one solution i don't believe that those presets exist and you know i'm probably gonna put out a preset pack and that'll be a disclaimer when i put it out like this is not you know final stuff this is something that gets you started so if you don't have a preset pack and you're not doing you haven't done that yet i encourage you to do that like asap and, and you're gonna see how much faster you're gonna get those videos done number six if you work with clients and you have a consistent base with people or maybe you do youtube content for yourself or social media content for yourself i suggest that you create one project file for all of your videos now something i used to do is every time i make a new video i would start a new project file one that's a nightmare when it comes to trying to track down project files right it's one thing but two i was having to load in all of the assets that I need to use all of the time. Something that I do on my YouTube channel that has saved me a ton of time. I now only have one project file in my resolve for one of the videos and I create new timelines within that project for new videos. If you go to my upper left side of my resolve and you look at the organization, I have everything already there, already tucked. I don't have to import anything. It doesn't take me 10 minutes to set up a project. It's already set up. It's a crazy big time saver. This is probably the biggest time saver if you can do it and it makes sense for you you know if you have a consistent look that you're going for for specific clients or maybe for yourself if you do that i guarantee you you're going to save so much time on the front end and you're just going to be lightning mcqueen out here in these streets ka -chow. and the last 
one, we're gonna in the last one, this crazy thing that I've recently found out about <laughs> is text-based editing. If you don't know what this is, this is a feature that both programs, Resolve and Premiere, put in their software a few months ago. And basically, if you're editing any podcast style content or an interview and you want to grab bites of it without having to watch the whole piece of content and cut it out and then put it in there, uh, there there's a solution for you. Go to your source folder, right click and hit transcribe right and then it'll create a transcript of what you're doing right and then you can literally highlight the words the audio that it read and then import it into your timeline just like that you no longer have to watch a full three hour podcast and then drag and drop things all you have to do is highlight and add the timeline this is single-handedly the best tool if you are a long form content creator again if you edit podcast episodes if you do a lot of interview content like i do for like my business stuff anything like that this is gonna save you hours hours of just like endless mindless just watching a video like that's so annoying i hate doing that and again if you didn't know about that before this video now you know and thank me now those seven tips are gonna change your life and it's gonna make you you know not hate editing as much but i promise you guys an extra tip if you are an all-in-one creator meaning you shoot and edit your own content this is this is for you you gotta shoot for the edit if you have not heard this piece of advice before all it means is that when you go out to shoot something do not shoot anything without the edit in mind you can't just shoot b-roll and then hope that it ties in in a really cool way in the edit you have to think about how are you going to transition between clips is this things that you can do in camera that can help the edit flow a little better if you don't have a full frame idea of the whole edit before even going into your production day you're gonna see that you're gonna spend so much more time in the edit trying to make sense of a bunch of footage that didn't make sense instead of doing what you should have done which is planning the shoot with the edit in mind i think this is a super beginner thing that all of us do you just shoot the stuff and then you find a good song and then you just put it to the beat and then it's like oh it's sick uh, but no <laughs> it's not sick it's like basic and it's not fun it's not done all right it's trash and what i in encourage you to do is always think of the edit before shooting because you're gonna be again you're gonna think of those things like oh maybe i can whip pan here this is all part of what we call the pre-production phase of any content that you need to create if you're not doing that yet that's totally cool i get it we're all starting we're all growing and I actually have a video where i'm reviewing a program that helps you do that better you should check it out i'm gonna put it up here but yeah that's the gist of the video i hope you liked it i hope you enjoyed it. i hope you got value out of it and if you did make sure to go down and drop a comment and let me know what was the best tip or what you took away from this video join the community and let me know is there another tip that saved you a bunch of time in the editing process that has made you an editing wizard make sure to subscribe and like the video at the point of making this video we're like so close to a thousand subscribers so if you're not subscribed like 70 percent of y'all 80 percent of y'all 90 percent of y'all whatever it is uh, are not subscribed to the channel so make sure you go and subscribe so you guys can see more of my content i post two videos a week so we're out here grinding we're out here working uh so i would appreciate your support through a subscription and a like and a comment you know what i'm saying we're not cheap out here we like all of the things i hope that you have now become a crazy fast editor through these tips and regardless of whether you are a crazy fast editor or maybe you take your time it doesn't matter just remember to stay grateful peace